Well, here we are. Painting watercolors. Uh, it's been a while since I've made a video. Um, I don't know. It takes up a lot of data and a lot of space. It's kind of a lot of effort. Um, I didn't really have a good setup before when it comes to setting up, you know, where do you put the camera? Where do you where do you put your hairy arm? <laughs> uh, I guess you put it right in front of the camera. Um, anyways, I usually start off a painting with really light colors like this, and um, you know, you you gotta you gotta let the paper and the water kind of dictate what's happening. I mean there's different paper and it's going to react differently to different water um, not to different water but to you know to different techniques um, it's going to react differently to different um, ratios of water or different amounts of water I mean sometimes I just I like to soak my paper with water um, so that's why it's a good idea to tape it down or, um, you know, clamp it, whatever, whatever you want to do. Lately, I've liked painting. I've liked taping the edges because when you un take the tape off, you got this cool white border that kind of brings the painting together. Um, so anyways, I use a lot of water. I've... I've learned you have to train yourself. I've learned to be, I've learned to not care so much about where the, you know, what's happening. It's, it's watercolor. So it's my favorite thing about watercolor is that it feels alive somehow. You can just tell like the, the, the paint feels alive. I don't know how to describe it. I guess you could tell that, you know, the paint was doing something on the paper um, mixing and you know mixing drying morphing um, and you can tell with, with a paint a watercolor painting that I like I can tell that the water was wet <laughs> I mean there's four types of you know there's four ways to paint watercolor you can paint wet on wet wet paint on wet paper you can paint wet paint on dry paper gets you a little bit you know darker values you can paint dry paint like a dry paint brush with not much water in it and all pigment on wet and then you get you know maybe a darker blurrier line or a darker blurrier stroke but it will blur and then you can do dry paintbrush on dry paper um, and I do I use that technique when I want to do details or when I want that effect so um. <clears throat> anyways this is a scene in Seattle and I just took this picture the other day so it It is off Admiral Way. Uh, it's off Admiral Way in Seattle. So you take the, um, the West Seattle Bridge over, you know, from I-5 over to the west side of Seattle. Um, and then off this bridge, you can see a pretty sweet uh, scene of uh, the Space Needle and the, this, the city skyline and all that. Um, so yeah, uh, we're getting through here the first wash. I didn't let this paper dry all the way after my first wash. 
Um, sometimes I just do one wash with, you know, a, a couple of colors in the beginning to block out some shapes and connect my, try to connect my shapes together is what, what you want to do with watercolors. I've realized um, I don't always, I'm not always successful at it. And then, <clears throat> you know, it ties the picture together. You've got a great foundation for your details and your darks and and your your other subjects. So, uh, anyways, I didn't do this one. I didn't let the first wash dry. I just kind of kept going. Um, it just depends on how it feels, how your paper feels, and all that. Um, I don't know what kind of paper this is. I keep mentioning my paper neck. I don't, but I don't know what kind of paper it is. I got it as a gift from my friend and for Christmas. And um, it's a big stack. Uh, I was very thankful for this gift. Um, and it's big paper, so it's fun to use. You know, it's a little funner for me to paint on a big on a bigger piece of paper. Sometimes a small paper can be fun, but just the lack of space there is to really tell your story sometimes is frustrating. But then again, sometimes it's it's just what you want, a little piece of paper just to do a little quick one. So, um, it's been fun getting going with this paper, so... I haven't used a lot of it until just now. I'm I moved to a new apartment, um, and I've got a lot more time on my hands. I don't have you know as many things to do since I was living in a house before. Um, there's lots kind of lots to do when you when you live in a house and have to take care of it. Um, anyways. I'm trying to work on my colors and I'm trying to work on, you know, colors that complement each other, um, colors that go well together. My palette has been the same for a long time, so I use mostly earth tones, you know, um, Burnt umber, uh, raw umber, raw sienna, um, ultramarine, cobalt blue, uh, uh, the dark blue with the indigo. Um, like I think I have some sap green. My yellow is. I forget what my yellow is. I'm, I've got, man, a lemon yellow, but I didn't use that one for this one for some reason. Anyways, the human forms I just made up, they weren't in my picture. For some reason, I, I have trouble taking pictures of people, so I don't mind if there's nobody in my in my pictures when I take a picture for a reference um, it depends if there's you know people everywhere and you're just taking a picture then that feels okay but like in this scene for example I wouldn't I, I wouldn't just stand there and take a picture of those people while they're walking towards me like all awkward so anyways you make them up and that's what's good about art so I'm not going to narrate through this whole thing. Um, just thought I'd point out a couple things that uh, talk about a couple things real quick. Um, if I can think of anything here, I'm watching the video while I'm narrating this, so that's kind of why I'm talking slow. Uh, Ever since I started painting my pictures, I started taking, it's funny is that my pictures got better faster than, 
I mean, my, my art got better. I feel like my, my art got better. I, mean, I used to just paint out of my head and I used to just paint, you know, a scene that I could think of because I used to think that it was cheating to use a picture reference. I used to do it as a kid and I was good at it. I remember drawing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles um, out of one of my Nintendo powers as a kid. And it was a good drawing. I impressed myself. I was like, wow. I, was, huh, I like this drawing. That was really good. And I was like, well, I wonder why I did that. I wonder why I drew it so well. I was like, because I, it's because I looked at a, a reference and like, I just felt it was cheating. I was like, well, of course I drew it so good. I could look exactly at what I'm paint, I'm drawing. I could look exactly at it. I can look right at it. Just copy it. Uh, but apparently what I found out was when I was 30, you know, 36, <laughs> a year and a half ago, 37, it's not cheating. And uh, I probably just should have kept drawing. But I, I remember as a kid, I was like, well, I can't really draw that good for my memory. I don't know how to draw a bicycle. I don't know how to draw a car. I don't know how to draw a building or a, a you know, bones or whatever it is. I didn't know how to draw it from my memory. So that's why I stopped drawing. I was like, well, if drawing while looking at it is cheating, of course, that's not true. It's just true to me. Then, I and, and I can't remember how to draw anything when I'm not looking at something. I'm not going to spend my time drawing. It's frustrating. It's hard. It's, I'm not good at it. So, you know, when I started painting, uh, it was acrylic. Now it's water. Hey, that's the end of the... That's the end of the uh, video, folks. Thanks for watching. All right, bye.